Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand what Azure Site Recovery is and then we are going to continuously replicate a virtual machine using Azure Site Recovery. The main problem Azure Site Recovery solve is business continuity and disaster recovery. And you can also think of this as disaster recovery as a service. Azure Site Recovery can basically replicate virtual machines. These virtual machines can be VMs on Azure or it could be on-premise VMs or even physical servers. As you can see, we have many options here. Now let's understand how site recovery works. Let's say you have a source environment and target environment. And in the source environment, you have two virtual machines as you can see. When you configure site recovery, what it will do is it will install site recovery mobility service. It is a virtual machine extension and this service copies the data of your virtual machine to a storage account in the same region. We call it cache storage account. And then this cache data, this cache storage account will be used to replicate the virtual machine data to another region. And this is done by Azure Site Recovery. And then if something goes wrong in the source region, we can create new virtual machines in the target region using the transferred data from the cache storage account to target environment disks. And the best part is until you fail over to the target region, you don't have to pay for the compute resources on Azure. And also you have the option to fail back to the source environment when that is alive, or you can reprotect the target environment by making that the primary environment. Now that we know what site recovery is and also you know how it works, let's go ahead and do a practical demo on Azure. The first thing that you need for this demo is a virtual machine on Azure. For creating that, I have this script here. Let me run it. My virtual machine on Azure is ready now. If I go into Azure portal and the resource group that I've just created, it's called production RG. And, um, here we have the virtual machine. Now, if I go into the virtual machine and scroll down into operations, and here we have disaster recovery. If you see this, wait for around a few minutes. This will go away when the virtual machine is ready. We have few options to enable replication with site recovery on Azure. And one of the ways is that using this tab and this wizard, this makes it much easier for you to create the target environment. And here, as you can see, we can change the target region. Now, let me change this to Australia East. And also, as you can see, it is shown in the map as well. Now, if I click advanced settings, and here we have four sections. We have target settings and storage settings, replication settings and extension settings. Now, if you focus on target settings, these are the settings for the target environment. As you can see, we can change the subscription and also the resource group and the virtual network that we are deploying the VM to in the target environment. And also we can configure the availability settings as well. So here I'm not going to do any change. I'm just going to let this wizard create a new resource group and a new virtual network. Even though it creates a virtual network, it will not create a virtual machine until we fail over to it. This will reduce our cost. Now, if you look here in storage settings, we have a cache storage account. This storage account will be created in the same region as the source environment. And all your virtual machine data will be copied to this cache storage account before it copies the virtual machine data to the disk that gets created in the target environment. And also you have the option to change its parameters as well, such as premium or standard SSD. For this demo, I'm going to keep premium SSD. And in replication settings, as you can see, we have recovery services vault and vault resource group and things like that. We have this resource on Azure called recovery services vault. This vault will be used to store data that we replicate. Since we need a recovery services vault, this wizard will create that as well. And you can change 
the subscription or the resource group that this will be created in and also there will be a new automation account created as well for managing site recovery extension updates for all your replicated items now all the settings that are here looks okay for me now i'm going to go ahead and review and then i'm going to click on start replication now this will create a lot of resources on azure and this will take around 30 minutes to complete until that gets created to make this demo a little bit more interesting what i'm going to do is i'm going to install iis on this app server for that i'll just copy the ip address i'm going to rdp into it now let me install iis in this server All right, I have installed IIS and I have changed the HTML and I'm going back to Azure portal and here to networking and then I'm going to add a inbound security rule here and I'm going to change the service to HTTP and port to 80. As you can see, the network security group is in place. Now if you go into the public IP address and copy it, as you can see, we are receiving the response from the IIS. Now if I go back to the deployment, we're seeing this message enabling replication for one virtual machines. Now if we go into resource groups, you can see that this is the resource group that I have initially created and there are two new resource groups. If I go into production ASR resource group, this contains one virtual network. When you fail over to this target region and this is the target region here there will be a new virtual machine allocated in this resource group and also in this region now if i go to site recovery vault resource group you can see three things here the first one is the cache storage account and as you can see that is in the same region as my source environment is in and then we have an automation account and then we have recovery services vault. If I go here to replicated items in that, you can see our app server VM and the replication status is healthy. And here we don't see a RPO. That means that we still cannot fill over to the new region because the internal synchronization is happening now. Now let's wait for another few minutes and come back to do our test failover. All right, as you can see, the replication is complete. And once all the resources are in place, you still have to wait around 10 minutes depending on your environment setup for completing the synchronization. Now for this demo, everything is complete. Now if you refresh here, here we can see the status is protected and the RPO is 4 minutes. And also it says here, I haven't done any test failovers for this yet. And if you go here to latest recovery points, we have the list of items now let me go back to the virtual machine and here yeah, let me do a change all right i have done the change to the virtual machine now if i refresh this as you can see we're getting it let's wait for some time until this gets updated all right now we have two options here we can fail over and we can do a test failover the main difference here is that when you're doing a test failover, you're not deleting or you're not stopping your source environment. And when you're doing a failover, you should stop your source environment because if you keep that running, there can be consistency issues. Now, let me click on test failover here. We can select the recovery point and Azure Virtual Network. And here we can see the failover direction. It's from Southeast Asia region to Australia East. And here we have a few options. I'm going to go with the latest one, lowest RPO. Here we have an option to select the virtual network in the target region. Basically, my virtual machine will be deployed into this virtual network. Now let me select that and click OK. As you can see, now Azure Site Recovery is creating a new virtual machine in my target region let's wait for around five minutes and come back all right as you can see we have this option enabled and these two disabled that means that we have successfully completed the test failover now let me go to that resource group 
in that target region here as you can see we have the virtual machine now if i click here you will see that the virtual machine is in place but the public ip address that is not assigned this you can do by yourself using a powershell script if you want to automate this or you can go into networking and you can click on the network interface and go to ip configurations and here if you click on this and you can associate with a public ip address that you already have here if you don't have a public ip address you can create it since i have a public ip address i'm going to go with that let me save it all right now if i go into that vm again and overview and here we have the public ip address assigned now let me copy that paste it here as you can see we have successfully replicated the virtual machine to the target region now let me go back to the resource group and here to site recovery vault and here we have few options we have completed the test failover and we can clean up the test failover with this you can clean up the virtual machine that you just saw i'm going to do that now now as you can see we have cleaned up our test environment let me refresh this page now as you can see we have these two options here failover and test failover again since we have cleaned up the environment now if i go into the target resource group as you can see we only have the virtual network and the disk and my public ip address my vm is not here now if i go back as you can see if i click on failover here you have the option to shut down the machine before beginning the failover and once you have successfully failed over to that virtual machine you will have these settings enabled for example you will be able to change recovery points until you commit it once you have the correct recovery point deployed, you can commit to it so that you won't be able to change the recovery point again. And after that, you have the option to re-protect your target environment. Basically, now that your target environment has become the primary environment, you have to still re-protect it. So basically, these are the options that you have once you have completed a failover. Today, we learn about Azure Site Recovery and we saw how to configure a failover for an Azure Virtual Machine. If you have any further questions or comments, let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. And thanks for watching.